Jim Fallon has got it going on. His butt bond goes strong. It makes my woke boner long. Stevie, can't you see? I want you off my TV. I know I can't be wrong. My late night host is Jim Fallon. Do you hear it? Do you hear it? Listen carefully. You'll hear the rapid sounds of the butt bongo being smashed by the big stick. Open your nose. I promise it's safe. Open your nose. You are not going to be exposed to the toxic mouth farts emanating from the set of the view. This is that wonderful smell of the grilled woke wiener. The celebration has begun. The triumphant return of the trio of huge embarrassing failures to late night television was a resounding success. It's all rainbows and woke wieners throughout the mainstream media this afternoon. Headline over at Variety. Jim Kimmel and Stephanie Colbert earn late night post-strike ratings crown. Well... Well, I'll be damned. I want everyone to take a moment here to bow down to the new queens. When I saw this headline from Variety this afternoon, I was incredibly surprised. I was shocked. You mean to tell me, after years of huge embarrassing failure, Jim Kimmel is the new queen of late night? You mean to tell me that Steph Colbert has finally found a way to succeed? I will give Variety a little bit of credit here. They did come up with an enticing headline that made me click on this article. Most of the time, I ignore Variety anytime they pop up in my news feed. Like the rest of the mainstream media, Variety publishes nothing but garbage. Earlier this week, when we were driving three hours to go to the kids' flag football game, there was a 15, maybe 20-minute silence on the ride, which was incredibly strange. If there is one thing that my girlfriend likes to do, it's talk. When she's quiet for that long, it means I've either fucked up and pissed her off or she's tired or not feeling well. So I ask her, hey, everything good? She says, yeah, baby, I'm reading this article in Variety. I'm so pissed. They are trashing all my favorite shows on Bravo. Apparently, Variety had published this hit piece on Bravo where they're basically trashing the network for encouraging cast members on reality TV shows to drink and create drama. Um, who would have thought that people producing reality TV shows would supply cast members with free booze and encourage them to create problems? Last I checked, that was their job. Basically, Variety was criticizing Bravo for doing their job. The piece was meant to garner sympathy for past cast members who were bitter because they were fired or no longer needed on these shows. And it was meant to paint Bravo in a negative light. But that's just one example of the garbage that I'm talking about with Variety. But this headline about Jim Kimmel being the new queen of late night, this headline from Variety, it was so creative that it managed to capture my attention. According to Variety, Jim Kimmel is crowned the new king in late night. Throughout the month of October, Jim Kimmel was the most watched show in the 18 to 49 demo. Huh, well, that's great for Jim Kimmel. I'm happy for him. The perennial loser has finally found a way to squeak out a win. Now, of course, Jim Kimmel had an unfair advantage over his other two brothers in embarrassing failure, Stephen Colbert and Jim Fallon. Steph Colbert, he missed an entire week in October with the Fauci hangover. Plus, Jim Kimmel, he was given the enormous benefit of having Monday Night Football as his lead-in. Now, although Jim Kimmel was the prince in the 18 to 49 demo, the true pretend leader in late night television is still Stephen Colbert. Throughout the month of October, Colbert averaged 1.9 million viewers. Now, that number does not include the week that he missed when he was suffering from the Fauci hangover. Jim Kimmel landed in second place with 1.6 million. Jim Fallon. He is barely hanging on to his job at NBC at this point as the host of The Tonight Show. Right now, Jim Fallon seems to be following the career trajectory of Travis Noah, the former host of The Daily Show of Failure on Comedy Central. Travis, he inherited the golden goose from Jon Stewart, who easily handed him one, maybe even two million viewers. After a few years... Travis had those ratings down to a cool 300,000. Jay Leno, he handed the Tonight Show franchise to Jim Fallon. Now, that audience had been established over decades. Carson hands it to Leno. Leno maintains it for over 20 years. He hands it to Fallon. All Jim Fallon had to do was keep the Golden Goose polished. Instead, he turns it into the polished turd. October ratings for The Tonight Show absolutely god-awful. Jim Fallon averaged 1.3 million viewers. Somehow, 
he has managed to run off at least 50% of the audience that Jay Leno gave him. Some guy named Sean Squires, or maybe his name is Seth Myers. He's made himself comfortable on the late night Bruce Caboose. Now, for those that don't know, Sean Squires, he's the late night host that follows Jim Fallon. I believe he used to be the lead janitor at NBC Studios in New York City. One day they had an opening for an unfunny talk show that was going to air in the middle of the night. NBC, they couldn't find anyone else to host this dump, so they gave the job to janitor Sean. Ever since, janitor Sean, he's been riding the Bruce Caboose. Last month, Seth Meyers averaged 769 thousand viewers. Now, if we were to believe variety, there are two kings sitting on the late night throne. Jim Kimmel, Stephen Colbert, right? Jim Kimmel entertains the 18 to 49 demo with his recycled jokes about Donald Trump. Orange man, bad! And Stephen Colbert is the undisputed king when it comes to overall viewership. Which, by the way, speaking of Donald Trump, did you guys happen to see Patrick Bet David's interview with Ron DeSantis? It just came out this week. If any of you guys have aspirations to be president, if there's any of you watching aspiring to be the next John Biden, let me give you a piece of advice. Study the campaign of Ron DeSantis and do the exact opposite. The campaign of Ron DeSantis, it already had nine toes in the grave. During his interview with Patrick Bet David, where he vehemently claimed that Donald Trump did not help him win the election in Florida back in 2018, Ron DeSantis, he essentially grabbed the shovel, smashed his campaign into the grave. There is a 15-minute clip on Patrick Bet David's YouTube channel. I encourage you guys to check it out. But anyway, according to Variety, Jim Kimmel, Stephen Colbert, undisputed kings of late night. But there's just one problem, one tiny little problem. For some reason, Variety failed to include Greg Gutfeld in these ratings. Now, I'm sure this was a simple oversight. I'm sure this was merely a clerical error. I'm sure Variety just overlooked Mr. Gutfeld. But KC, Greg Gutfeld airs at 10. He's not in the late night category. Why? Yes, he is. Bill Maher, John Oliver, they air once a week and they get included in the late night category. The media, they don't want to include Greg Gutfeld because he consistently kicks their ass. During the month of October, Greg Gutfeld averaged over 2 million viewers. Now, according to my calculation, his audience, 7% higher than Colbert, 22% higher than Jim Kimmel, 36% higher than Jim Fallon. Well, KC, what about Janitor Sean? <laughs> when you compare Gutfeld's ratings to Janitor Sean, the janitor does not exist. But you know what I find most interesting about this? Over the summer, Gutfeld was averaging 1.7, 1.9 million viewers. Over the summer, Greg Gutfeld was basically running unopposed. The trio of huge embarrassing failures, they were on sabbatical for five months because of the Hollywood writer's strike. Eventually, they put their collective brain cell together, started hosting a podcast called Strike Force 5. But you would think, with the trio returning to late night on network television that Greg Gutfeld's ratings would go down. Instead, they did the complete opposite. Gutfeld actually increased his ratings when the trio of embarrassing failures returned. Five years ago, late night hosts, they would have been fired if they were drawing these ratings. Today, they're being celebrated. And I keep hearing the excuse that the format of late night television is antiquated. But like I told you guys before, it's not the format that's the problem. It's the host. If you put Greg Gutfeld on CBS, NBC, ABC, he would be drawing 3 million viewers easily. This dude is dominating late night and he's on cable. Let me give you an example of how broadcast networks are viewing late night television. Earlier this morning, I received several emails from you guys explaining who CBS chose to replace James Corden. Now, Jamie C., he used to follow Steph Colbert, but earlier this year, he decided that he was just tired of failure, so he quit his job. Well, at least that's what CBS and James Corden told the public, but I still think that he was fired. James Corden, he was losing CBS over $20 million a year. If he wasn't fired, he was about to be fired. You don't lose a company $20 million and keep your job. Now, in the past, if a host stepped away from his late night show, the network, they would find a replacement. But instead of CBS replacing James Corden, they decided they were going to try something new. 
They hired some girl named Taylor Tomlinson to host a game show called After Midnight. Now, I have no idea who Taylor Tomlinson is. I had never heard of her. Supposedly, she's a comedian, but, you know, me and these broadcast networks seem to have a different definition of comedy. Taylor Tomlinson, she's young, 29 years old. She appeals to women under the age of 35. Maybe this show will work out. I wish her nothing but the best. I hope it does, but it just shows you what the broadcast networks are thinking about the future of late night television. Instead of replacing James Corden, CBS just scraps the show. They end it all together. For a while, there have been whispers that broadcast networks are looking to get out of the late night television business altogether. And if something doesn't drastically change, that is exactly what is going to happen. Just because these shows have been on the air for decades, it doesn't mean they're going to last forever. It doesn't mean they can't be canceled. Five years ago, The Tonight Show generated $334 million in ad revenue alone. Just The Tonight Show. Last year, the four late night shows on network TV, along with The Daily Show on Comedy Central, they generated $342 million combined. These shows are no longer making the money they once made. Wouldn't surprise me if some of these shows are actually losing money. This is what happens when you alienate half the country. According to Mythbusters, 95% of the guests on late night TV are either liberal or woke shit fucks. 95%. Now, we don't need the brilliant mind of John Biden to figure out why these shows are failing. These shows are supposed to be lighthearted. They're not. They're supposed to be entertaining. They're not. They're supposed to be funny. They're not. The easiest way to fix the problems in late night television, get rid of these hosts. I don't think Greg Gutfeld is funny. He can be at times, but Greg Gutfeld is not a comedian. But you know what Greg Gutfeld is? He's relatable. None of the other hosts are relatable. And if you can't relate to your audience, you're not going to have one. But give me your thoughts on this. Variety. They crown Jim Kimmel and Stephen Colbert the kings of late night. But for some reason, they forgot to include Greg Gutfeld. Was this a simple oversight or did Variety ignore him on purpose? And do any of you guys even watch late night television anymore? I'll watch clips sometimes when I'm doing research for this channel. I'll watch Greg Gutfeld sometimes during the week, but the rest of these bums, I haven't watched them in years. What about you? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.